this is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show. And today, I'm pleased to have punk rock legend from the adolescence, D.I., and the Radolescence, Casey Royer. Thank you for being on the show Thank today. Thank you, Eric, for having me. It's uh, my pleasure. If you could collaborate with any legendary musician, living or dead, who would it be and why? Probably John Lennon of the Beatles. He's seen a lot of different, different uh, eras, many generations, from black and white to Ed Sullivan to the hippie things at the Dalai Lama. And uh, I think he would be an interesting guy to talk to. I think he would be kind of really informative and a well-versed world traveler. And very, I'm sure he liked fish and chips. Johnny Cash would be kind of cool. The pros and cons of social media for you. Oh, the pros are we could share all of our like gigs and all of our photos and all of our information amongst our friends and keep our underground scene kind of alive like we did back in the 80s without you know any kind of like major media blitz by anything corporate and huge. Like, so I think it's a fantastic thing. The social media right now is really a great thing. It's connecting people that would otherwise not be able to be connected with each other so it's fantastic it's a lot of fun the cons there's a lot of haters out there that just try to get into people's business that just really should you know mind their own business other than jumping into other people's business to just sensationalize their own per personas it's just like kind of like a trigger effect you know you could like say one thing it, it snowballs into another thing so the commentaries and the comments on some of these social media sites are questionable in the negative way because sometimes you could turn something into something completely opposite than what it is you know like secondhand information third-hand information you know it always changes in a slight variance and that's the negative part of the media thing is just misinterpretation how important is fame to you and could you live without it fame isn't really important at all and yes I could live without it because I really don't feel it personally you know I just feel like it's just I just have fun and people have adhesed to me having fun and you know like surfing skateboarding playing music and stuff it's just like how we grew up in California and it, I, you know, it would be fine if I didn't do anything in my life and just lived with my friends and had a good time in life. What would you consider your greatest achievement to date? Monetarily, I guess, having my song I wrote, Amoeba, in the adolescence was in the biggest money-making media project in history, Grand Theft Auto V my song Amoeba was in it. Wow. And so that would just, I think it made like what, 10, like $5 billion in the first weekend it was released. So there's like, you know, there's milestones I've like, you know, hit just, you know, unintentionally just having fun with my band. Do you believe your music can still have a social impact after all these years? Absolutely. Our forum has grown. Our ability to reach many, many people with our music has advanced enormously. So yes, we have very impactive tunes. We always have topic matters that are kind of thick you know what I mean like you know other than just like Kansas songs you know we have like songs that are like about life events that are you know politics or whether it be just relationships but stuff that is like you know pertinent to like existence like folk music a reflection of society and you know what we do have a you know it does have a you know a pertinence to the world we have an impact if you could go back and talk to yourself when you were 15 years old what would you tell yourself what advice would you give basically none I would just say live your life the way you live your life it's like trying to change your destiny you know you can't really say anything to your about yourself because you have a preordained like existence you know get a job be an archaeologist I don't know what I would tell myself there's nothing to say what one life event of yours would you change if you could relive it not a whole lot i had a great life and i just yeah, like had a great life. yeah it's just been fantastic it's been a great ride and it's still still like escalating so yeah. you know and i just don't really pay that much attention to it because all you just have to do is go through the the the, the routine and it just things end up the way they are if you have a good thing to say if you have good things to like you know give to people so much the better you know so much for your positive karma do you believe you are the measure of all moral truths well sure okay. how would you how would you define the word love uh, just having a strong concern for other people's well-being. What is your greatest fear? Probably being stuck in a room with Carl Malden. What would you like your legacy to be? My legacy would be I'd be more of a teacher. The adolescence is your legacy. Your your catalog with DI is your legacy. All the shows you've played. You're part of a historical movement in music that you are a part of that. If you could fix anyone injustice in the world, what would it be? Anger and war and 
hate. If all those were om omitted, it would just be a wonderful world. Were there any parental precepts that you rebelled against when you were a kid? Not really. It was pretty much autopilot when I was growing up with the job, the, you know, the at-home mom. You know, there was nothing really that was really... Out of out of the perfect context of being you know growing up for me, it was just it was really a, it was a really a good time and there was nothing really that was like you know negative really because you know I'm from a middle class family we had you know enough going on in my life to where it wasn't you know nothing was really painful or you know never went hungry everywhere like that and everything was structured fairly well Southern California you know pretty much. There was nothing I was really rebelling against because everything was really going good. Like when I got into college, I was still like uh, living at my parents' house and uh, just had a radio program at, at you know Fullerton College and everything. I had a pr pretty perfect life, you know. What comes first, the lyrics or the music? Both. Songwriting is very odd. You know, you can just get a feeling of something, transfer your emotions into it musically, or just have a concept, you know, philosophically, or just a point you want to get across, and then write music to that. You know, depending on the, depending on the the mood or of the topic matter of the songs, you know, topic the concept can throw like the music into exactly where they connect you like that like for example uh, one of our latest EPs we have a song called World at War and Eddie wrote the music wanted me to put r words to it and um you know, just a song. No, no titles, no anything. Here's the music. So I titled it World at War and was talking about, you know, just horrible things like Saipan, you know, like, you know, you know, all kinds of World War events. And then Eddie said when he wrote that song, he was thinking about World War, a World War, you know, kind of like a, a song that related to like war and just like, you know, anxiety or just perseverance and that kind of thing and I'm all like I, here I wrote gave him my lyrics and it was just like that it was just like exactly what he had depicted in the music he wrote and I could feel what it was like by the sounds of it it was it it, it, it needed to have something that was along that guideline that would match up to the music so you could write songs in any way you know it you know a lot of songs are written accidentally. I wrote Richard Hung himself on upside down bass, left-handed. When you got together back in the day with DI or the adolescents, was it all done right there in the studio when you all got together, or was there ideas that you brought in? Both. There's like pre, pre you know, pre-thought out songs and you know, and uh, and uh, you know, directions to write the songs, and then there's some songs that just roll together, like you know, like here, write, write words to this immediately, and it, it works out, and you can just like make it happen. You know, it, it, there's many ways, you know, there's, you know, you could like work on a, a song for a while or you could just just nail it. One take, one hit wonder, one take and you're done with it. So what brings you the most peace in your life right now? It's the way we're getting appreciated, our our scene through the media, the media blitz that's going on with, say, YouTube and all that stuff. It's a blessing. I'm getting a lot of love from around the world right now. We're about to do a Euro European tour for the first time in 20 years. Magazines are calling me up like I'm like, you know, like Steven Tyler or something. You know, it's just crazy. It's just like really great. And uh, and it's going to be a great, uh, you know, mission onto the next step for DI and as well as the Rattlescence and all the other bands that I've been in. So, yeah, I think things are going really well. What do you love the most about connecting with your fans? At this point of my life, there are some people that come up to me that are my age that say that I changed their lives I you know I was with them they were with me the whole ride ever since we started putting these CDs out back in the day they are thanking me graciously and they have their kids with them and it's just it's very emotionally like over, it's almost overwhelming the way up you know people look up to me like I'm almost like a like a religious figure or something and just say thank you for helping me grow up <laughs> having something to get into that wasn't your average everyday corporate rock and roll or radio stuff it was just like unique underground kind of a fun existence and so people all over the world come up to me and just thank me for that and it's just very strange having that feeling of and not really intentionally doing that but just facilitating their life through just my entertainment and it's just really intense it's really great I mean I just can't even believe it and say for example they'll be bringing their children to gigs and the kids will be singing the songs and you know that's just amazing it's just incredible you know having these people 
be a part of my life and me be a part of all of their lives because I don't really think that much about being a star or being a, a, a celebrity or anything like that and that, I think that's what put me up like I'm a little higher up on that level you know just because I'm a normal down to earth guy but just when I see people come up and just say I really helped them change their lives they don't know what they would have done without me being there or without our genre of music being there and the lyrics just hit bit touched touched a lot of people's souls and it's just incredible I mean I just can't even believe it it's really I never would have thought that would have happened because these kids that weren't even born when we were writing these songs are singing like pointing singing every word yeah in in festival settings mm -hmm. it's just insane I mean it's incredible we've played in you know 20 to 50 thousand capacity festivals you know 500 kids in a pit all singing songs I mean that's pretty different than the garage at, in Fullerton when I made up social distortion me and Mike in my bedroom at my parents house now all of a sudden everybody's like famous it's just what really yeah but it's kind of kind of cool you know get yeah, to see the world and have fun your time has finally come what is the most unselfish thing you've ever done for someone I told my sister I'd give her my kidney what are the greatest adversities you've had to overcome to get where you are today well just having punk rock not be a big money maker for about 10 15 years after it kind of hit pretty much in the mid 80s was kind of a struggle because I was raising my son you know single dad and you know go to the gigs that weren't paying tons and just like you know just persevering with a, a low low income you know but just believing in the music and the fan base and the fun because you get to go out and see your friends you never know what's going to happen at a punk show you know mm -hmm. so uh just like just keep on keeping just keeping on with the direction with through just like believing that someday maybe you know it would be able to you know pay the bills you know but uh yeah that was a little adverse to just try to keep you know like work in the daytime raise raise my son and play gigs at night all over the board you know it's just like it was it wasn't easy for a while you know what i mean but it was our lifestyle it's just what we do we just like to we're just musicians it's just it's just in our blood you know ever since we started playing when we were all kids in fact the guys in di all went to the same high school same junior high school we all just grew up in a music environment. Everybody like played instruments and had little practice areas when we were like in junior high. So we'd look up to these other bands and just start simulating that. And then all of a sudden it just became what we do. What is your greatest extravagance? Oh, nothing. <laughs> no, absolutely nothing. Yeah, I've always been a humble, like check to check guy. I've never really like, you know, bought a new car, you know, there's always a, a more practical way of like traveling and getting more out of like, you know, being a big spender on something let's see I, I don't think maybe a PlayStation 2 I don't know simple stuff or nothing really that extravagant well, at, at all a nice surfboard was pretty extravagant for me you know at that point of the game it was a you know 9-3 Stewart you know trestles in the Casey Royer I've known over the years and I and I see this with a lot of people in the entertainment business is that once you've put out a few records or you've established yourself even if you fall on hard times a lot of times there's these fans that will just give you things all the time you know right. like hey you want free weed you want a place to crash it's almost like having that vinyl gives you entree into their world and so hey you you know if you're if you need a place to crash for a week here's my couch or you want the refrigerator's yours or my girlfriend's yours or whatever people will just share and you're kind of like a hail fellow well met you know everywhere you go people you don't cause controversy so you're endearing to people so people want to give you things so i wouldn't see you having to go out of your way to get an extravagance i would think people would would lavish extravagant things on you so that's my and even when we hung out for that short time i saw people like yeah you want to eat at this restaurant for free here's some beer and you know hey we're with casey it let's it's, yeah, yeah it's a so, good, great camaraderie yeah yeah there's all kinds of perks in that respect because i've just had a respect for each other and and people help Helping the people like that are putting music across that are struggling a little more than your average person and they just like to be around us because they get a sense of like of, of knowing us like mm -hmm. we're their friends like if you watch a TV show and you think you you know you'd somebody walk up like from like you know some old sitcom or something and yeah. you'd like go I know you like you know say the Brady Bunch for example if like you know one of the Brady Bunch kids walked up you would just you would adhes to them and you would want to be around him because you already kind of know him so that has happened in my career and it's a blessing because it's so amazing to have that kind of love and support and just good 
good feelings, you know, for like just people that really appreciate the, the time put into it and the things we've said and, you know, standing on our own with like a whole new revolutionary kind of sound that was, you know, that was kind of denounced for a while. And uh, it's intense. It's a really amazing feeling. If you believed there was a hell, would Hitler be rotting there? Absolutely. Oh, that's a silly question. Of course, he would use one of the most h horrible humans ever put on this earth. Yeah. Uh, yeah but you say it's a silly question, but, but the people in this room know that we've asked that question to other people and they can answer it. Wow. Yeah. All the horrendous, horrid things that has that had happened in World War II. How could anybody even say that it's questionable whether it was bad or good? Tell me about the new D.I. covers album. We just recorded a 13 song cover album, which wow. which is really amazing. Name off the covers. Dude, we just killed it. These guys are unreal. We did. Uh, it's on Cleopatra Records. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did The Chain by Fleetwood Mac. For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield, Rock and Roll Night Party Every Day by Kiss, Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds. It's all upbeat, you know, kind of mm -hmm. cool. Um, Heart of Gold by Neil Young. Uh, I Think I Love You by The Partridge Family. <laughs> Dude, it's so, it's so awesome. Uh, we, we really like nailed it. We like just, you know, cause it's hard. You think it's hard to like, you think it's gonna be easy to do a cover song, but you know, cause it's already done. But it is harder than doing it than doing your own material because you've got a you've got a better a, a, like a, a, a million dollar production for a song th on Warner Brothers and make it better. And so we hounded, we just pounded, 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 and we just did the best version of a Highway Star, Deep Purple, dude. This album is going to be amazing. I'm really really proud of it. And it took us about like <laughs> almost like eight months and we tracked all of our stuff at Hurley Studios down in Costa Mesa and we did all the vocals in my guitar player's bathroom because we were recorded backwards. We instead of spending money on a big studio, we did a scratch track and then did the guitar tracks over the scratch track and then ditched the the drum rhythm track, the drum, uh, you know, the, the rhythm track drum, and then went in the studio and played real drums for an, ex an expensive studio. Instead of doing the whole record for like 300 bucks an hour, you only do the drums and then you track it on your Pro Tools at your house. And it came out perfect and we have the time to just, you know, change stuff, you know, it's no hurry. And so that was the, that's the new frontier of recording. You know, you just like, you just do it at home on Pro Tools on your own thing and you isolate yourself in rooms and you just need the drum is really in a big room to be really live and uh and it's going to be a great i'm really really proud of it i mean it's going to be really good we do hot child in the city <laughs> nick gilder mm -hmm. strangers oh, dude it's so great i mean i can't believe it uh they put us to the test and these guys just came through with flying colors i mean just just amazing i mean the end of like the chain just whoa hold on to your your hat but yeah so we're doing that one that was one of the latest release and then we're going back to europe in uh, july for a month doing all over western europe and then we're going to go to Japan in February then we're thinking South America and then maybe uh, Australia I think it's I think it's on for DI right now no it is. let's talk about a uh, birdie bird massive props she included you in a thing called PNX news so Casey tell me about the birth of PNX news and give birdie bird some props bird is awesome uh, bird uh, songbird uh, productions I think it is or bird song songbird songbird productions bird and I got together we're friends uh, you know from years and years and uh, I was cast in a music video by the Yeasty Boys it's a clown band in Orange County we dress like clowns and do punk covers with clown words like it's a holiday in clown Bodia you know silly stuff right so we shot a video called the Bozo Bomb about a bomb that lands in Amer uh, Southern California and turns everybody into clowns so I was cast as a, a newscaster called Carl Boyer just to do 
the news scene while describing the bomb and all of the bros are in the living room. So she got me to do the Carl C. Boyer thing for that. And then I'm all like, we should do like a weekend update, Saturday Night Live from the 80s meets Wayne's World kind of thing and interview bands and stuff dressed up stupid and silly. So uh, she called it PNX News and I was Carl Boyer and she got the character Roberta Bird after the first one that was made with me. So now we have hundreds of episodes around the world. PNX News is, is, is famous now. I mean, it's we got PNX News UK, PNX News Japan. Now we're about to go on tour to all these places that we've built this fan base through this underground crazy TV show we just made up. And it's just like like me and Rick and, and, and Bird made it up pretty much. And we just started production and we do throws and stuff like, and now Roberta Bird in Blackpool, England with GBH. Roberta? And then she'll be all, thanks, Carl. Here we are with Colin and GBH. And then we'll just do that. And it's silly and stupid, but it's 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 starting from the ground level up again because we're non-profit. We don't make any money off it. We're just doing it for the camaraderie of the music. And then we promote all the bands like the Exploited, the Dickies, uh, Misfits. They're all our friends because we're all the same age. So we'll get these bands on there and promote their website to sell stuff. And it's kind of self-promoting our scene. We're not profiting, but it's but people really respect us doing that just because it is keeping the, uh, everything alive and it's funny because it's comedy I mean we just mess around I mean Lee Vang from Fears coming down we're gonna do a comedy thing and it's it's just amazing it's you know because now we have you know we know how to work the green screens and have the cameras and the mics and we know how the, it all works so now we're just doing that and PNX news is gonna is huge I mean you gotta check it out punks news I have checked it out I'm back in it yeah Diana I mean Roberta bird you know bird she has been networking by going to Rebellion Fest for years and years, you know, and getting all the bands like, you know, the Exploited, you know, the Subhumans, all these guys to be on the, sh on the show. I mean, we're actually getting some respect, like we're really serious, mm -hmm. but we're not. But everybody in punk is not serious anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a fun underg underground thing. So now, through all this stuff over about five, six years, PNX has been going on. I got my passport back. We're going to all these places where I've built the fan base through PNX News. So now, like, like Kenny DeSelva, my buddy who is in the decline of Western civilization. He was the Asian guy with the uh, with the crutches. He lives in Yokohama now. So he takes pictures for PNX News of these Japanese guys lighting firecrackers on their balls and stuff. I mean, it's great. Great news. You know, it's funny because he's all, oh, this Kenny, I'm on a subway in Tokyo. You know, it's just like throws back and forth. Mm -hmm. And it is classic. And now this time, it's a first. I've got my passport. We're doing a Rebellion Fest in, a, in August. Right. So I'm interviewing the Hajj, you know, the guys in the Hajj on the PNX News thing last week. And so I did a throw to myself in England. I'm all Carl Boyer here. We're going to DI in Blackpool, England. I think we have Casey Royer. Casey, are you over there? And I'm going to be all, thanks, Carl, to myself. We had Rick Agnew once interview himself on a split screen. It's just hilarious. I mean, we've got some funny things. I got the damned. We got the damned singing monkeys songs backstage at the at the at the the glass house in Pomona. Captain Sensible, cheer up, sleepy Jean. All of them are singing. It's just classic fun times, man. And that is never going to stop in my life. Fun is a very major word. It keeps you healthy. Do you have a woman in your life right now? Right now, no. I've just had a bazillion girlfriends, and I'm just like, right now, I'm focusing on my career. The Blaring Out Show.